copy. Okay, here. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Oxen. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Oxen. Hello, hello, my check, my check.
Check, my check, my check. So let's see. Hi, Joey. Hi, today we're going to talk about, oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, this is Ivan here. So later will be Mr. King's chemistry lesson. Hi, Kucheng. Hi, Ibrahim. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Okay. So today we'll be talking about my next chapter. Uh, this is what we have done. This is for year 11 mainly because this will be the ending of chapters. Okay. So this is the only chapter that you guys not really need calculator that much okay it's not like previously so you need to calculate a lot okay so Joey Ibrahim uh, I, uh, yeah, you guys please share to your friends so ask them to watch uh, live as well okay so we are waiting for more people then we we'll start so. how to do need Ibrahim need what Joey, Joey, where is your friend? Where is Ming Yi? Where is um, uh, Yan Ling? Where is Yan Ling? And Fu Cheng, where is Marcus? So I see some from here, some from... We're actually live in two platforms using Facebook and YouTube. Hi, Hao Yan. Hi, Hao Chen. Thanks. Thanks, Hao Chen. Okay, so we'll start where we have reached 10 billion. Okay, don't know that. Yeah, your name is cool. Raw dog is cross eye. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's a good name. Okay, so let's start with our magnetic chapter lesson. Okay. So, first of all, let me introduce a bit. Uh, so, our mega thought if you thought mine is mainly a channel. Our website basically, we are selling our online courses. So, if you guys have missed this, um, Free online lesson, then you can go to our mega talk.edu.my and then ask for more details for the videos. Okay, so now let's start. So, this magnet chapter mainly, they are, we'll start with this part, which is the MPS but can break rule. Okay, so yes, this is physics and chemistry. Raw dog is cross, huh? Okay, and from YouTube. Okay, so physics and chemistry. Physics will be talking about. Magnetism and chemistry. Oh, yes, we have two you can learn. Yeah, you can learn for future to prepare one. Okay, so magnet, first of all, you need to know about there are two types of magnets. Okay, so what are the types of magnets here? One we call it permanent magnet, and another one is the temporary magnet. Okay. So for permanent magnet, it is only made from steel. Okay. Only this type of uh, metal, it can be a permanent magnet. And for temporary magnet, is your iron. Okay, so we call these two type of magnet as, oh, oh sorry, these two type of metal as ferrous metal. So we can check here, ferrous metal. So they are only these two types. And then the rest, like aluminium, magnesium, tin, and so on, lead, they are all the non ferrous metal. So they cannot be magnet. Okay, so what is a permanent magnet? So permanent magnet will be a steel that always retains its magnetism, but if you heat it or you demagnetize it by using heating, by using the dropping it onto the floor, then yes, it will not be a magnet anymore. But you can try to magnetize it again. So the most common permanent magnet that you see will be this one. Okay, the magnet bar. 
And remember, it's very important to know how the magnetic field line goes. So you're always from the north to south. North to south. North to south. North to south. So always come out from the north and go into the south. Okay, so how are you going to check the magnetic field? There are two methods. Number one, you can use iron fillings. So you can fill sprinkles the iron fillings or iron powder on a piece of paper and then put a magnet underneath and then check the pattern. Or number two is when you're using compasses. So you can put a compass around the magnet and then you can check the direction of the needle that it shows what is the direction of your magnetic field. Okay, so remember permanent magnet only steel. Okay, and permanent because it can retain its magnetism. Next, let's go to the temporary magnet, which is our iron. And it has a special arrangement, which is something like this. Okay, something like this. Lah. So this will be a positive terminal, negative terminal. And this thing is soft iron core. And it's coiling around by the wire. And at the bottom there, we can put some needles to check. So this would be the setup of making a temporary magnet. Or there's another name we call it as electro magnet. Okay, so why electro magnet? Because it's run by electricity. Okay, so how it works here? Must always remember that the current always come up from here. Positive, go back, flow, 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 flow. Okay, so when it's flowing in the wire, when current is on, then you will get magnetic field from where? From your conductor or your wire. So after you get the magnetic field from the wire, and it is coiling around, it's like wrapping around your iron core. So when you wrap an iron core, the soft iron core will like, it's kind of like absorb, or you can take the magnetic field from the current or from the wire to magnetize itself. Magnetize. After it's magnetized, what happens is that they can attract the nails. Okay, so this is how the magnetization of a soft iron core works. Okay, so one. Then number two, if you want to demagnetize it, it's pretty easy. So if you, let's say you don't want to use this uh, magnet anymore, then you just cut off the circuit. Okay, so you just find somewhere, like let's say you add a switch somewhere here. Then you open the switch, okay? So when you open the switch, what will happen next is when there is no more current flowing, then you will not have any magnetic field anymore. And then it will demagnetize, of course, because you have lost your magnetic field. And the next, the needles will drop, lah, of course. Okay. So, so far, I hope you guys understand what is temporally magnet and what is electromagnet. Okay, so. Oh, hi, computer. It's already now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so far, I hope you guys understand. That's the lesson so far. Okay. Now, after this two introduction, just now we have mentioned that oh, when there's current flowing in the wire, you get magnetic field. So in question, most of the time they ask you find the direction of your magnetic field. So how are you gonna find the direction of magnetic field? Okay, so here comes this this thing, Ampere's right hand. Sorry, I miss out a word. Right hand get root. Okay, so I put this up from the wave now. Okay, so what's Ampere's right hand grip rule? Mainly it's like your hand here. Okay, so this will be your Ampere's right hand grip rule. Okay, so that's right here. Let's say this is your hand. Okay, something like this one. Okay, then what is your thumb? Your thumb will be your direction of your magnetic field. Eh, sorry, my direction of your current. Okay, and then the rest of the four fingers will represent the direction of your magnetic field. So now, this will be your current. And the four fingers. Field. Okay, so how are we going to check what is the direction of magnetic field in the wire? Let's say we have a straight wire here. Okay, and the current is going downwards. Okay, then when the current is going downwards, so we need to find what is the direction of my magnetic field. So, 
Let's see here. My hand, currently going down, then close. This way. When I close my palm, it shows direction of magnetic field, so it will be an anti clockwise direction. So, something like this. Around the wire. Okay. But if it is a direction we going upwards, then up. So, anti clockwise. Okay, so it'll be two different directions. But in the exam, sometimes they give you the, the, this pattern in 3D or they give you in the 2D different uh, 2D format. Okay, so how are they gonna test you if they give you something like wire? Let me use a piece of paper. Good. And another one is this one. Okay, so this tool, it means this this one, it means your current going in to the paper and this current out from the paper okay so into then you draw a dot this one i sorry cross and then out will be a dot okay so into the page how do you know what's the direction so again your thumb okay and feels right hand grip rule of the grip then get in okay then this direction so it'll be a clockwise direction so we go the beautiful lines okay if it's out then it'll be this way and the clockwise line so when the direction of the current change your direction of magnetic field will directly change as well okay so this will be the Introduction of your magnet. Okay. Now uh, next one. Only for magnet, you will have this first law of okay, or the right hand grip rule. Then after that, you actually have a few more. Okay. Besides your right hand, you need to use your left hand and your another right hand again. Okay. So. From here, let's check. So this one again, like what is the function of MK right hand grip ruler? Is to find your direction of magnetic field. So always remember, give me in or out. In out. If it's in, clockwise. If it's out, opposite direction. Okay, then, okay, how is your Fleming's left hand and what is your Fleming's right hand? So today will be the magnetism chapter part one. So in part one, we only talk about these two, and then this one we talk in the next chapter, I mean the next week uh, video. So Fleming left hand rule is something about your left hand. So and not really about the left hand, but find your force. What so do I mean by find my force? Okay, so it's mainly when your magnetism, magnetic fields, they interact, and they produce force. Okay, mainly magnetic field from two object, your terminal magnet, and your current carrying. On the okay, we can use force lah. Okay, so basically this hand will be uh, using your left hand. Okay, F B I. So this is called your Fleming's left hand rule, and you'll be using F B I. What's F B I? It's not your um, okay, but this F B I here will be force. Magnetic field. This is a method for you guys to remember easily, like FBI, easy to remember. And then C, I will be your current. So when you don't remember how to do it, right? Okay, use your hand here. Write out F, B, I, and. 
Nick, don't be shy. FBI, in the exam, you don't be shy. Okay, so just show your finger and then tell them, oh, this is FBI. So FBI can find what? Find force. How to find force? When well, the force happening will be when the magnetic fields they are interacting, permanent magnet, and current carrying conductor. So this is the FBI. Okay, F force, magnetic field. Okay, and Fleming's right hand will be also FBI, but we talk about it next week. Okay, so let's go in more details about this Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, so. Flames left hand rule. Okay. So when we are talking about flaming left hand rule, it means when we find your direction of force. Okay. From where left the force will be produced when they are interaction between magnetic fields from permanent magnet and temporary magnet. Okay, so basically use a bigger picture to explain, it be like this. This will be your magnetic field from your permanent magnet. you are always from the north pole to your south. And you add with your current carrying conductor magnetic field. This not the one, this will be the into the pitch. So remember, it will be this way. How? Again, this one. Okay, so from the permanent magnet and your current carrying conductor, you produce a force acting on the wire. So it will be something like this is your magnet, north to south, and then you're putting a wire in the middle. Okay. And then this wire will be moving downwards like, when you're putting it in the middle. Okay, why? Why? Like, because the magnetic field from this current is acting with the magnetic field of this magnet. So, why in this way, magnetic field in this way? So, they are in perpendicular direction. So, when the perpendicular direction, the force will be maximum. Okay, so always remember a few keywords perpendicular. Okay. When we're perpendicular, then you can produce force. Okay, perpendicular of what? Uh? Again, two magnetic fields. We can say they're interacting. Okay, but if it is a parallel like this, and you're putting like this, because the current, this is magnetic field, and then this is a current, and they are not interacting, so there won't be any force. So from here, okay, same uh, cross. Okay, I'm gonna find it. So now use a Fleming left hand rule like F, B, and I. Okay, it's not H, it's I. So force, magnetic field, current. So everything starts from your middle finger, which is your current. So this current is going into the page. Right? In. Okay, so we put it in, into the page. So this is paper, it's a page. Like in your exam, also the same paper, it's a page. So put it in, then this index finger then always point to your south, which is your B. Okay, so we're going to decide, then you see automatically your thumb will moving downwards. So you can force it coming downwards. Okay, so remember your finger must always be 90 degrees perpendicular to each other. Okay, then force is downwards. So when force is downward, what is the direction of a magnetic field? Just now it was like this, okay, and it was like this. So if it's all this way, then your direction of magnetic field or being pushed at the top. So the arrows. Okay, so because there's force here, it won't be a magnetic field, so magnetic field will be forced from the top part. Okay, so mainly Fleming's left hand rule like you're using in your DC motor. 
Okay, and when the questions ask you how to improve or increase, how to you increase your force, how to increase F, okay, so a few ways to increase your current, and to increase your strength of magnet, okay, and then third one, this most important one, make sure they are in appendicular direction. Okay, so these three most important ones that will help you to memorize how you want to solve the questions. Yes. Okay, then after that, when do you use the Fleming Fleming? Let's uh, talk about it slightly more. So, most of the questions that you will see in the exam will be in DC motor. So DC motor, so is connecting to this, and actually something brush here. Let's skip that part. So this is actually a DC motor, lah. Okay, so here is positive, here is negative. So always remember, DC motor is direct current. So direct current means the battery there. So direct current, positive will be giving out the current. So you can go here, here, and go in, and then come out. So go back to the negative. So when you see this kind of pattern, it's, we, we call it like a 3D pattern. So you draw it in 2D. It's better for you to know how to find the action. So if you draw it 2D, it's something like this. No. So. And then find the rational. So this is going into the side and this coming out from the side. So this will be into the page and out from the page. If it's in, cross. If it's out, dot. Okay. Then you can find the direction of this turning motor or yeah, turning cord. And we are again, it's in, in, not to stop. Say, and see, out. So opposite current, opposite direction of current, so it will be opposite. Okay, so we think that this whole thing, the coil, will be turning in a clockwise direction. So this is what the exam will always ask you. Okay, and then in the exam, they ask you what are the things and what else you need to add on if, like, uh, what is the function of this tool? Okay, this thing we call then as commutator. Commutator or speed thing. Okay, I must remember the name right now. So what's the function of splitting or coming data is to reverse direction of current. Okay, so the reason of having this uh, is to make sure that your coil is turned in a full revolution, full. Okay, you want like halfway and go back, halfway, go back. Okay, it's like a fan. If, the foil, uh, if there's a fan turning halfway and then go back, it's quite annoying. It's not a complete circle. Okay, so this thing, having this function. And in the exam, sometimes I gave you this brushes as well. So the brushes actually will be something like here. Okay. So this brushes like has a function which is help to connect the wire. It's like a middle, like it's a medium to connect your wire and the commutator. You know, why can I swear you connect to your commutator? Like, okay. So then then you keep on having friction. So nowadays people actually have invented a motor without the brush to reduce your friction so that you have less energy loss and so on. Okay, so these are the brushes. Okay, so exam will always ask you the same thing again, again, and again in how to increase your force. So again, increase your current, increase your magnet, okay, which is your strength. Okay, and always make sure they are in perpendicular direction. Okay, so now let's try a few questions before we pass to Mr. King's chemistry lesson. Mr. King is very exciting. He's excited to teach you guys uh, the electrolysis. Okay, so let's check which question to okay. So we're starting with this question. 
So this one on a passe question uh, from reason here. Yeah? Okay. Then this question is show that oh, your two straight wire, your x and y, so they are both horizontal in uh, their whole there. Okay, so y going downwards like here, say down direction. So the current is into the pitch. Okay. So when the current is into the pitch, what will happen to both wires? Okay. So here is something new. Guys. When you're having the current moving in the same direction, okay, same direction, what will happen is that oh, confirm and for sure the direction automatically will be the same. So when they are the same, then they'll form an even larger direction of, I mean, a lot, even larger magnetic field. So when this magnetic field is large enough, then they'll produce a force of attraction to pull each other. Closer. Okay, so they attract, so both wire will move to each other. So this will move to the right, this will move to the left. Then if they are not in the same direction, so one is out, one is in. So in the clockwise direction, oh. Opposite. So you see, both of them, they are no interaction there. So when there's no interaction, they actually produce a repulsion force. And both of the wire, they will repel each other. Okay, so this one is one of the questions they have asked in the reason part here. So we have to memorize it. Okay, same direction, different direction. The track, repel. Okay, because of the magnetic field direction. Now let's go back to this question, okay? So in this question, we will see same direction, now. so which means, oh, they ask, okay, so the magnetic field of Y due to the current, and then produce a force on Y, so click, okay? So indicate the direction of the magnetic field. So let's start with the force, okay? Force, because same direction, left, right, then you go to the left, okay? Then what's the direction of the magnetic field of Y? Okay, so when they are the same, so then there's a force pulling it to that side. Okay. Left hand node, okay. So force to this side and current going into the page. Okay, so this is a bit difficult, but we choose a bit. I mean, like this. Lah. So this one, when there's problem in rotating your hand, change the direction of the vehicle. Okay, so force to the side and current going into the page, then your magnetic field will be pointing down. So we often okay. So this is one question of magnetic field. So MTS like can be good. Okay, so now let's go to another question. So let's check this question. Okay. So now it says that oh there's a cut and then there's a wire going upwards and the current is going up. Okay, so draw a complete magnetic field line through P and indicate its direction arrow. Draw an arrow through Q, indicate direction with the complete pass. Okay, so upwards, direction going up. So we can go and start to confirm our answer before we write down. So upward, so upward is out from, out from this card. So if it's out, then you will be a dot. So when there's a dot, like this, and the clockwise direction. So and the clockwise direction. Okay, this will be direction. So okay, confirm. And the one. So this way. Okay. That is how you complete it. Okay. Complete magnetic field lines, and then you can draw an arrow to the P. Okay. Yeah. This way. Okay. Next. State the effect of the direction in which compass Q points off increasing the current. So increasing the current direction will change or not? No, it won't change. But the magnetic field will become stronger. Only the strength becomes stronger, but the direction is just the same. So remains the same. Okay, then reversing direction of current, yes, for sure you will change the direction of your current has changed. So direction. Of magnetic field 
Okay, so this is far too much relax. Then after that, in figure 10.3, it shows that the view of the cup on the top. So point W is vertically above the top of the cup. So state the magnetic field strength at STW in terms of magnetic field strength R. Okay, so you compare R to ST and W. So you can choose weaker, same, or stronger. So we see a distance. Okay, so actually distance will determine what is the strength of the magnetic field. So at S is in front of R. So obviously it will be stronger because it's stronger to the wire. Yeah? So it gets more magnetic field. And T is same distance because one box, one box. So same strength. And W is the same. Okay. Because the same direction. Okay. So okay, so this will be the question that you might ask me for your MPS right hand grip group. Okay. And let's check. One more question for both Okay, so let's check this question. A simple one. So again, if you don't remember, your hand, so write out F, B, I, B. So F is force, B is magnetic field, always write out. And this one is current. So easy or not? And next question. This so far is an easy question. Then here, okay, this will be a DC mode, simple one. Okay, then ask you what is this and what is this. So the curve thing, be all and then the flat one is carbon brush like you have mentioned this now okay so this is very very important so so far we do not have any questions uh, asking about the calculation so it's good for us okay so what you write now because the next question is says uh, Bigger 9.2, write in each of the box name of the motor, arrow pointing. Okay, like this is not so carbon brush commutator or speed ring. So, state which way the coil of the motor will rotate when the switch is closed. View from X. So, the view from X, uh, seeing this way, and this positive, positive mean current going in. So, this one will be in, this will be out. So, north, south, always draw it down. In, out. FBI, in. North to south, this will be now. This will be up. This will be a clockwise direction. So, two things could be increase the speed. Sail, stronger magnet. Stronger current or higher current. Okay. So, this will be one of the sample questions for Fleming Stephanie Rule, and we have done uh, two sample questions for Fleming uh, MPS Ranking Group. Okay, so for physics, we'll be stopping here today uh, for your MPS Ranking Group and Fleming's left hand group. So, next week, we'll start with uh, Fleming's. Right hand rule and also transformer. So we look forward to more details on how we can use it in your life, how we are helping you, and examples that we have done so far. Okay, so in some questions. Okay, so now let's pass the mic to Mr. Kane. He'll be getting back in um, one minute. So please don't leave the life. Okay. All right, hi everyone. I'm Mr. King. How are you guys? 
Alright, today we are going to continue with electrolysis part 2. Okay, so we have done some basic about electrolysis last week. Alright, so first, okay, electrolysis. Okay, so start, we are going to discuss okay, electrolysis okay, with two different methods. First one is with inert electrodes. Next, example with active electrodes. Okay, so we know that inert electrodes are those electrodes that they are unreactive, which means they will not react with the electrolyte itself. Okay, we know that examples of inert electrodes, basically that tree, isn't it? Okay, we okay. can. Yeah. Carbon, graphite, and the denim. And these three, they are inner electrodes. Examples of active electrodes, they are uh, they are all metals. Okay. Let's see example. So basically, this is the basic setup of electrolysis. Example. So in this case, in electrode, so which means both yeah, carbon electrolyte, for example equals copper to nitrate solution. Okay. For electrolysis, okay, the first step. First step always look for the ions present in the electrolyte. Okay, this will always be your first step. Okay, so in this case we have equals copper to nitrate. Okay, so what are the ions present in? Okay, copper two means Cu two positive. Okay, nitrate NO three negative. Equals equals means it contains hydrogen and hydroxide. Now comes to the half equation at anode and cathode. So we know that and not it will attract negatively charged ions. Okay? Negatively charged ions. So you attract nitric ions and hydroxide ions. So which one will get the charge? Okay? For inner and normal aqueous solutions, ions will get the charge based on the position of the ions in the reactivity series. Okay? Based on the reactivity series. So we know that it's it. nitric and hydroxide. Nitrate and hydroxide. So which one is lower? Hydroxide, isn't it? Therefore, hydroxide will get the charge. Okay? Copper and hydrogen, which one is lower? Copper and hydrogen. Copper is lower, isn't it? Therefore, copper will get the charge. So half the equation, you know that anode will attract negative ions. So which means hydroxide will get discharged at anode. Cathode will be coupled. When hydroxide get discharged, the half the equation. Cathode gains electron to form coupled. Right. So what? Are the observation okay, observation at anode and cathode? See, anode it produces oxygen gas, isn't it? Okay, so remember, whenever gas is produced, the observation is always standard. For gas, it is always gas bubbles are formed. Okay, observation at anode, cathode is it? Copper is formed copper atom which is copper solid 
So observation and cathode will be, uh, you cannot write, copper is formed. Okay, this is incorrect. Observation means something you can observe with your eyes. Okay, so copper from solid. Therefore, observation will be solid deposit is formed. Okay, pretty easy, isn't it? Uh, next, come to example using active electrode. Okay, the normal setup. So how are you guys? Should be very happy, isn't it? Tomorrow is public holiday, no need to go to school. Yeah, I can sleep late, I can wake up late. Happy life, isn't it? Okay. As an example, so in this case, active, for example, we use copper. Okay. Copper, copper. So, equals copper to nitrate solution. Okay. So, here's the question. So what is the observation there and the half equation at and not and head off. Same thing. The first step is always the same. Always look for the ions present. Yes, you know that in this case couple to Cu2 positive. Okay. And O3 negative, that's hydrogen and hydroxide since it's equal solutions. Okay. So you know that negative, I mean positive ions, okay, you get attracted to cathode. Negative ions, you get attracted to anode. So here comes the question. Which one will get discharged at anode? Okay, nitrate or hydroxide? Okay, which one is lower? Hydroxide is lower. What do you think? Is it hydroxide? No. Okay, it is not hydroxide. Okay, remember for active electrodes, ions, we know that. Okay, what is active electrodes? Active electrodes means it is very reactive, it will react with the electrolyte. Okay, it will react with the electrolyte. So, since it's copper, okay, copper, copper. So, therefore, copper itself, it will get the charge. Okay, not this two. Okay, copper itself get the charge. Okay, cathode, same thing, you will copper ion as well. Right, see. Right, uh, see. So, uh, how do you derive the half equation at anode? Okay, if you are, if you are not too sure, this is, this, uh, there's a tips, pretty easy, okay? We can start with the half, half equation for cathode first. Okay, you see, cathode, Cu2 positive, you get the charge, cathode. Cu2 positive get the charge. So this is the same. Okay, Cu2 positive okay, gains two electrons to form Cu. Right. For the half equation and not, uh, basically you can reverse this. Okay. The reverse version of the half equation and cathode will be the half equation at and not. See, you reverse this. Okay, reverse from Cu form. Cu2 positive plus Cu2 negative. That's it. Pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, basically you just okay, not too sure. Okay, always start with the half equation at cathode. You reverse it, it becomes the half equation at anode. Right? Then followed by the observation, is it? At anode, this is solid, isn't it? Okay? Solid from ions. Okay, solid form, which means the anode it will erodes. When it erodes, it becomes thinner. Okay, it erodes. Okay, and it becomes thinner. Okay, become thinner, become more slim. Uh, see, solid it composed with form ions. Okay, it form ions. Okay, it form ions. Okay. From ions, that's why it becomes thinner. And the ions form, which is the Cu2 positive, okay? The Cu2 positive form, it will move to cathode. Okay, 
this Cl2 positive, you see it gains electrons to form solids, see, from ions to solid, okay, all these ions, it will get attracted to cathode, it will then form solid, so eventually, okay, solid will form, okay, at the surface of the cathode, so eventually, observation will be, cathode becomes, take a tumble fat, Okay, uh, so it's like, okay, if we go gym, okay, we become more sleep. We eat more, uh, okay, become thicker, okay, your waist become thicker, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, mass increases, okay. So, that's it. Pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, now moving on to some applications of electrolysis, okay, some important applications of electrolysis. So, First one will be electroplating. Electroplating. So what is electroplating? So basically important things is that you need to know, okay, what are the two purposes? of carrying up electroplating, okay? There are two. First one is to improve appearance, okay? To improve the appearance of the object. Next is to prevent corrosion or rusting. Okay, the two main purpose of electroplating. Right. Okay, examples of the experimental setup of electroplating. So anode will be the metal they want to play okay, on the objects, for example, okay, uh, silver. Okay. Next one, okay, key. House key. Ah, okay, young kids, okay, if you are sneaking out, okay, please remember to take your key with you, okay? If not, you have no key to go home, then your parents will find out that you actually are sneaking out, okay? Uh, okay, so this is 